Titus 3. We're wrapping up the book of Titus. Let's get straight into it. Verse 1, remind the people to be subject to rulers and authorities, to be obedient, to do, to be ready to do whatever is good. Remind God's people to be subject to, to honor their rulers and their authorities. He's really building off of number two, how we're to honor in, in the home, how we're to honor in the church, we're to honor the authority that's in our life. We're to be obedient and ready to do what is good, to slander no one, to be peaceable and considerate and always be gentle towards everyone. We're not to speak negatively or falsely about people, but we're to consider other people and to be gentle towards everyone. The scripture says, let your gentleness be known towards men for the Lord is at hand. God's watching. Verse three. At one time, we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. Let me put this in the modern version. And one day, at one time, you were a wreck and I was a mess. We were all messed up, but praise God for the grace of Jesus Christ. He said we lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, but God, when the kindness of Jesus appeared, he saved us. He saved you, verse 5. He saved me. Not because of the righteous things we had done. There was nothing that I did that I I wasn't good enough, but because of his mercy. Ephesians tells us how he lavishes us. God who is rich in his mercy and grace lavishes us with it. His mercy, the richness of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ, our Savior. We were washed, we were renewed by the Holy Spirit, and God just poured out his love on us with Jesus Christ. And we, verse seven, this is the key verse of the chapter, we have been justified by grace so that we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying. This is a trustworthy saying. He says, and I want you to stress these things so that those who have trusted in God may be careful to devote themselves to doing what is good. Those who have given their life to Christ need to be very careful to do what is good. We need to make it a point of priority. We need to make it a point of focus. These things are excellent and profitable for everyone. We need to do things that are good for all. We need to look out for one another, verse nine, but avoid foolish conference controversies and genealogies. All these big words are tricking me up but avoid foolish controversies and genealogies and arguments and quarrels about the law. Stop bickering and arguing about the Old Testament and all these different rules and regulations and rituals and traditions of men. The purpose of the law, the purpose of the Old Testament was to point us to Christ. He said they are unprofitable and useless arguments. They just waste time, cause division and frustration. We are called to be united under the head of the church, Christ Jesus, Ephesians 4. We are called to be united under him. He says, warn a divisive person once and then warn them a second time. After that, you need to have nothing to do with them. Don't continue to get in these arguments. Don't continue to bicker. Don't continue to squabble. It's not a beneficial use of your time, the apostle Paul would tell us. You may be sure that such people are warped and sinful. They are self-condemned. I like how the word warped is used, like a piece of wood. It's when a piece of wood gets warped, it's, it's unusable. It's not usable for the purpose that it was intended. When you're framing a house, if there's wood that's warped, they can't use it because it's not solid. It's not firm. It can't stand in the structure. It's not able to resist against pressure. And so it's something that's not profitable. I love the example that he uses as he closes out. And he would, he would send his greetings. We'll close with this, verse 12. As soon as I send Artemis or Tychus to you, do your best to come to me at Nicopolis or whatever that says, because I've decided to winter there. Do everything you can do to help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their way and see that they have everything that they need. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good. I want you to highlight that in your Bible if you highlight. Our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good as Christians. We must devote ourselves to doing what is good. James talked about he who knows what is good to do and does not do it. For him it's sin. If we know what's good, we need to do what's good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. Let's care for one another. Let's live productive 
Everyone with me sends you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all, and grace be with you too. Be blessed today.